Early versions of the miniskirt have appeared on ancient figurines and ancient Egyptian frescoes, but the miniskirt as we know it today didn't originate until the 1960s. By the 60s, the motherly housewife image of the 1950s was dissolving, as more women than ever before were enrolling in universities and joining the workforce. It was finally time for a skirt that was less homely and more liberating. Every generation likes to push the envelope when it comes to skirt, or push the hemline up. In 1964, British fashion designer Mary Quant helped design the mini skirt as a garment that would allow women to run, jump, and really kick up their heels. And that meant that the hemline had to be short, really short. Mary dubbed her design the mini skirt, not because of its appearance, but to pay tribute to her favorite car, the mini. Before long, Mary's new miniskirt quickly got a leg up on its competitors and turned into a weapon of sexual revolution for women everywhere. Almost everywhere. Since the 60s, the miniskirt has gone from hot to cold and back again, but it is yet to fully short out. A miniskirt, by definition, is anywhere six to eight inches above the knee. It's provocative, it's flirty, it's daring. There's always a miniskirt moment. There aren't always the right legs for that miniskirt moment, though. When I see a girl looking hot in a miniskirt and she has great legs, it's like, right on, I would wear it too if I had it. So if you've got it, flaunt it. The men's wristwatch is considered by most to be an icon of masculinity. But it took 300 years and a world war for men to finally realize it. The first known wristwatch was given to Queen Elizabeth I as a present in 1571. It was known as an arm watch. Styles evolved, and by the 1850s, wristwatches were donned by ladies of the French elite. You would never catch a man wearing a wristwatch. And then they were miniaturized. When they were miniaturized, they were mostly pocket watches. Which was a perfect accessory for the modern man. However, fighter pilots found reaching into their pockets difficult while flying. With the help of Louis-Francois Cartier, the wristwatch was popularized among these aviators. Like clockwork, the trend spread to soldiers on land and sea. But civilian men didn't fully latch onto the trend until soldiers returned home armed with their new wristwatches. And the wristwatch finally achieved icon status as a timeless accessory. A wristwatch is the only stylish way to tell time in the modern world. We know, watches are like the good for like the little syndrome. <laughs> I have to articulate it more intelligently. It's really a piece of jewelry now. It is a status symbol thing. It kind of gives you some confidence. You can tell a lot about somebody, where they've been, where they've come from, where they want to go. And I understand for men the love of watches because it is an adornment that is very masculine. Men are conventionally only permitted to wear two objects of jewelry, a wedding band and a wristwatch. If it ticks, keep it. If it beeps, kill it.